Next on News Talk AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show with Kevin Doran. It's Brian O'Neill in for Kevin Doran again today. As promised, we're talking about the Donald Trump meeting. On the Newsmaker Show with us today, Hornell GOP leader John Buckley, who was at that Friday meeting with Donald Trump and over 50 other state Republicans. John Buckley, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on today, Brian. John, first question, uh, can you tell us how long the meeting was? Uh, approximately two hours, Brian. And wh- I was told during a phone call on Friday by Assemblyman Bill Noje after the meeting was over that there were two times during the meeting that people clapped, once when Trump talked and once when you spoke. Can you tell us, John Buckley, what was it you said to Donald Trump that made such an impression on Trump and the whole room? Well, um, the meeting started off with uh, you know Mr. Trump entering the room and and uh, you know we did the obligatory handshakes and um, introductions around the room and and then Mr. Trump started speaking and, and and had a lot to say right off the bat before we even got to the question and answer part of the meeting and and, and as we got into the Q and A portion of the meeting um, there was there was a time where. I felt people were, uh, you know, just getting hung up on certain things, and then and the meeting started to drag. And, and, and as you know, Brian, you know, I, I just kind of, uh, a lot of the times I kind of cut to the chase and, and get right to the point. And it was basically, you know, if you had a question, you just raise your hand and Mr. Trump would call on you. Uh, so I, I, I raised my hand, and Mr. Trump pointed at me and called on me, and I, I said to Mr. Trump, I said, I said, look, Mr. Trump, you know, we could sit here all day and, and talk about the nuances of this issue or, or that issue, and we could, you know, spend a lot of time doing that. But I came here for the singular reason to convince you to run for governor of New York State. And and I I, I went further, and I, I said, Mr. Trump, in everything you've ever done, you've had you've been wildly successful in business and real estate, uh, television. I said in this race, you've got the the name ID, the name recognition, you've got the the resources, the money, you've got everything you need to win this race. And, and I told him, with all due respect to uh, Rob Astorino, who is the um, um, county um, executive in Westchester County who, who was considering running, I, I said, with all due respect to him, he might be a great guy, he might be a, a great county executive, but he's not going to win this race. And I said, Mr. Trump, you're a game changer, and if you enter this race, you'll win this race. That is, uh, that would be an impressive thing to say. Uh, now, Assemblyman Phil Palmasano was also at the New York City meeting with Trump on Friday. Do you remember anything, John, that uh, Palmasano said to Donald Trump? Yeah, Phil, Phil was very uh, well-spoken at the meeting. Uh, Assemblyman Palmasano basically just kind of laid out the, the roadmap to victory for Mr. Trump and, and you know, touched on a, a number of things, um, you know, one of the things being, um, you know, that Mr. Trump would have broad crossover appeal. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people, especially in New York State, are you know party liners, and and especially for a statewide race in New York, it's hard for a Republican to to really overcome that with basically a two to one disadvantage. Um, you know, with Democrat um, over Republican as far as voter registration goes, and and, and Phil touched on the point that uh, you know Trump would have so much, you know, just broad appeal. You know whether you're Republican or Democrat or independent, conservative, you know, or whatever. Um, you know, and he, he really you know harped on that point, which you know to his credit he's right. Uh, so you know Phil Palmasano was you know very well spoken. Uh, you know I, I'm very very proud of Phil for speaking up. Can you tell us any of No Jay's input during the meeting? Um, I, to my knowledge, I think Bill had a uh, meeting before the meeting with Mr. Trump. Um, uh, dur- during the meeting, I attended. Uh, Bill. Bill sat in and, and had a few words in the beginning, but uh, you know, for the most part, you know, the, it was more the county chairman uh, from the various counties throughout the state and, and the other assemblymen, you know, asking questions and, and having a little give and take with Mr. Trump. And, and Mr. Trump really just kind of, you know, talking about running for governor and uh, you know what that entails and, and how we would go about it. Here's what Donald Trump told Greta Van Susteren on Fox News. Uh, he was on a telephone interview, and this was right after your meeting with Trump on Friday. 
All right, let me ask you about, uh, are you running for governor? Because I understand you're meeting with some people or have met with some people about running for governor of New York. Well, you know, a group of people, a great group, a big group of people, over 50, just came into my office, and I was very honored by it. And as you know, the state of New York is doing very, very poorly. Uh, tremendous unemployment, tremendous, and the highest taxes in the United States. So they are talking to me, and I've given them certain ideas and certain parameters, and we'll see what happens. But certainly it's something I'm considering, and I'll make a decision pretty much by the end of the month or early February. Yeah, well, you know, we, we talked about that, and uh, you know, and some of the other media outlets, Brian, I know the, the Buffalo News and uh, Newsmax, uh, Donald Trump even went a little further. So, you know, what, what I'm about to say is already he's already said to the media, uh, you know, basically Donald Trump said, look, if there's no Republican primary, I'll run. Um, he, I, you know, basically he doesn't want to waste his time with a primary and, you know, get beat up by a fellow Republican from now until September while Andrew Cuomo gets a, you know, a free ride until then. So, um, you know, if the, if the party can coalesce around Donald Trump and, and not have a primary opponent, uh, which I think would be the right thing to do, then I think Donald Trump is going to be in it. I mean, the, look, I, I sat in that room for two hours, and, you know, I, I, I talked directly to him, and, and I think that, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, he's not serious and, and he likes immediate attention. Look, I, I was in the room. This man was dead serious about running. Here's a little bit more from that Friday Fox interview with Donald Trump. What, give me the odds, sir, of like you're 75 percent in thinking of it or 25 percent. What, what I, I think there's a good odd. You know, I love the country and I love the state of New York. And I see what's happening in New York and certainly with the country, as we just discussed. That's the least of our problems in the country. But I see what's going on with the state of New York. And it's really a uh, it's a very so sad what's, situation. So, what, so if I'm betting money, what what are the odds right now? Well, tonight? I, I, I realize things can change. If there's unity in the Republican, and I said this, if there's unity in the Republican Party, I would do it. There has to be unity. Number, they have to give go me a in. number. Well, let's what say 50-50. How about a 50-50 number? 50, but okay. All right. if, we, if we have to go with numbers. But I want to see unity in the Republican. You know, the state is three to one Democratic, so it's not something that's so easy to do. And if you do it, you have to do it right. But when you have sound bites that you're the number one taxed state in the nation, that's a bad sound bite if you happen to be an incumbent governor. John Buckley. Yeah, well, you know, Trump mentioned the you fifty know, percent. Uh, uh, I'll say this: I think he is one hundred percent committed to wanting to run. Uh, you know, wh- why does he say, "Well, it's you know fifty fifty"? That's because he doesn't know what the party will do. If the Republican Party can get out of its own way and and clear the way for Donald Trump, he'll run. But you know, it's a big unknown because of uh, you know Ed Cox, the the state party chairman, and uh, and Astorino from from downstate, you know, what their intentions are. Um, but to me, Brian, you know, this is the biggest no-brainer in the history of politics. You know, here, here we are, a Republican Party in New York State that's, you know, pretty much floundering if you, if you look at statewide races. Uh, you know, even though, the, you know, the Republican Party does well in, in certain counties and, you know, in certain, you know, towns and cities and villages and, and whatnot, but statewide races, you know, we haven't really had much to cheer about lately. And here comes Donald Trump saying, hey, I'm not only interested, I'm willing to run. Just clear the way for me. Let me do it. So basically the Republican Party just has to get out of its own way and let it happen. John, is there anything else you can tell us about that uh, meeting on Friday with Donald Trump? For example, the SAFE Act, Common Core, fracking, wind. Are you at liberty to say where he stood on any of the issues, or is that private stuff at this point? Well, we didn't really, you know, some of the things were brought up, but it's it's such a, an early, you know, it's so premature to really delve into those issues. Um, you know, I, I know, you know, we could, have, like I said, you know, Brian, at the top of the show, when I when I had my remarks to Mr. Trump, you know, we could spend all day and all week talking about these issues, but you know, my my goal was to get him to actually run, and you know, once he once he commits and once he announces his candidacy. Then we'll get into the issues. Um, but as far as the actual issues, I would say that he actually spent, you know, the majority of the time talking about, you know, taxation. Uh, you know, he said it in the soundbite. You know, we're the highest tax state in the nation, and you know that, that's nothing to brag about. Uh, he talked about upstate in particular. Uh, he talked about the lack of jobs. He talked about the mass exodus of business leaving New York State. He talked about the mass exodus of people leaving New York State. Uh, he talked about. You know, it's just the, the, the squandering of our youth. But just the, you have to basically give our youth a reason to stick.
stick around, and we're not doing that. And he, you know, he said, look at look at other states. He, and he, and he was a little glib when he made this remark, but he said, by the time this meeting is over, Florida will surpass New York State in population, and, and he's not too far off because you know that's actually going to happen in, in the next few weeks. It's Brian O'Neill in for Kevin Doran on the Newsmakers Show. John Buckley is our guest. Donald Trump for governor is the topic. And when we get back, our conversation about that Friday meeting will continue. Qualifications and rules apply. See institution for details. Next person in line, please. You know, I've been coming in here depositing checks every week for years. Uh Uh-huh. And in all that time, you've never remembered my name. Uh Uh-huh. I don't think you've ever said, Hi, Alan. Nice to see you again. How's it going today? Hi, Alan. Nice to see you again. How is it going today? When it comes to our banking, are we being reduced to a drab, nameless account number? Introducing Kasasa, the new people-first free checking account that rewards you as a valued member of our community. Kasasa gives you free checking with nationwide refunds on ATM fees those other guys charge. Monthly Kasasa rewards like cash back in your pocket and personal service that proves to you just how much we care about your banking. Do you, Kasasa? Visit TryKasasa.com. K-A-S-A-S-A. Carried locally at Maple City Savings Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Back on the Newsmaker Show, Brian O'Neill on the phone with Cornell GOP leader, 9th Ward Alderman John Buckley. John, from reading YNN's Nick Reisman's reporting on CapitalTonight.com, Erie County Republican Chairman Nick Langworthy seems to be on the same page as State GOP Chairman Ed Cox. Cox told Newsmax.com that if Trump wants to run, Trump should go through a primary like the other candidates. Trump has said, as we've talked about earlier, he does not want a primary with Westchester County Executive Rob Astorino. Trump also told the Buffalo News that if the Republicans were all behind him, he could win. Now, Cox, this is kind of an interesting thing, and we've talked about this on the show before. Cox has been both ignoring Trump and promoting Astorino as a candidate for governor. Your take there on the uh, politics between state Republican Chairman Ed Cox and Donald Trump. You know, frankly, Brian, I, I don't really understand it. Um, it seems like the Republican Party is its own worst enemy. You know, here, here you have a Donald Trump. I mean, come on, this is Donald Trump, who you know, just had wild success in, in everything he's ever done. He, he wants to run for governor, and the, and the state party chairman is basically telling him, well, you know, go through the primary process. I mean, come on. And, you know, this Astorino, he's got no chance. He's not going to raise the funds. He has no name ID. He's, it's just a, a non-starter. You might as well just wave the white flag of surrender right now. Um, <laughs> you have, I mean, you have Donald Trump, who would probably be the prohibitive favorite to win the governorship, and, and the state party leader, you know, I use that term lightly, is basically saying, well, go through the primary process. I, I just don't get it. And as far as, you know, any other, uh, you know, the Erie County chairman, um, you know, here, here's the problem in Republican politics in the state of New York, Brian. You have certain people in, in certain positions who, who are just very much comfortable in the way things are. They have their, their own little circle or radius of influence or their little, you know, little fiefdoms or, uh, you know, they have their little power here and there, and they're happy with that. They don't want, they don't want to rock the boat. They're happy with just having things the way they are. Um, you know, you look around, and, and my question would be, how's that working out for you? How's that working out for the state of New York? So I would say, you know, instead of thinking about yourself, start looking out for the people in New York. Start thinking about creating jobs, lowering taxes, lessening the burdensome regulation. And how do you do that? Well, you don't get some guy that no one's ever heard of that can't raise enough money that's going to get thumped by Cuomo in the general election. You go with a Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump's basically standing there saying, I want to run, just get out of the way and let me do it. And, and Cox and the guy from Erie County or wherever. Langworthy. Or basically just, uh, you know, putting up roadblocks. I, I don't get it. Now, Buffalo billionaire Carl Palladino, who ran for governor last time around, has threatened a campaign where he'd get into the race. Uh, apparently in a Ross Perot style way, uh, if the official GOP candidate for governor does not go after or try to replace Senate Republican leader Dean Skelos and Assembly Republican leader Brian Kolb, 
was Paladino brought up at the meeting with Trump at all? If and can you talk about it? Uh, he, he he was. I, I did hear his name mentioned, but he wasn't uh, discussed in detail. I, I will say this: I, I think if Trump gets in the race, I think Paladino would would support Trump. Um, uh, if some, you know some of the others, maybe an Astorino or uh, you know someone else got in the race, I, yeah, I could see I could see Paladino jumping in on the conservative line and and you know maybe he's kind of splitting the splitting the ticket, so to speak. But but I think if Trump gets in, if Trump announces and and he goes for it, I think Paladino will will support him 100. percent John, the New York State Republican Party, from what I'm aware of, from talking to my Republican sources. They've been doing a lot of phone conferences. Have you been in on any of the calls with Rob Astorino? I have not. I have not. I have not met the man. Um, he hasn't reached out to uh, to me, or I, I, whether or not he's reached out to county officials, I'm, I'm unaware of that. Any final thoughts on the Trump meeting on Friday before we move on to our final topic? Well, it, it was just. Uh, you know, I just want to say I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to have been a part of that meeting and uh you know for a you know for someone like me who's you know just an alderman in a a small city of hornell to uh you know take part in uh a meeting at trump tower in front of donald trump you know it's (laughs) you know it's kind of of a surreal moment but uh you know as i was sitting there uh you know watching all the you know all the big power brokers in the republican party and and mr trump and, and mr trump's aides you know i I just kind of had to pinch myself and and, and also remind myself that, you know, I I wasn't really invited there just to be a wallflower either. So, you know, I I did speak my mind and and, uh, get my point across to Mr. Trump. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Mr. Trump was great. He was very gracious. What a a great guy. He's one of the most knowledgeable people you'll ever come across, Um, you know, very very confident. And uh, I I think he would be a tremendous governor, and uh, he just exudes leadership, Brian. And, boy, you know, if, if the Republican Party can just get out of its own way, he'd be a tremendous governor, and, and we could actually see some positive changes in New York for a change. We quickly wanted to talk about the Chris Christie situation, another governor, the governor of New Jersey. Here's what Rush Limbaugh said Friday about Chris Christie. After witnessing what's happened to George W. Bush, after witnessing... Pick, pick your favorite Republican. Pick it after witnessing years and years and years of how they are treated. They actually thought Christie was going to be able to and had buried this yesterday. And now they're wringing their hands and they don't quite know what to make of this. They're worried. Maybe just somebody know Christie was lying because they really they thought they, they thought Christie nailed it. And Rush Limbaugh saying there that the mainstream media just won't give up on the Chris Christie Story, your take on that there, what uh, Limbaugh said, John Buckley. Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's an interesting story, uh, you know, with the, the lane shut down, you know, at the bridge there. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's pretty petty. I don't know that, you know, Christie had any knowledge about it. You know, he claims that he doesn't, and, uh, you know, one of his staffers or aides, top aides, you know, did it on their own. Um, you know, whether whether or not there's an email out there, you know, that he was CC'd in on, I, I have no idea. Um, I, I will make this observation, though, Brian, you know, that the media, you know, jumped all over, is jumping all over Chris Christie and, and you know, won't let this ride. And, and, you know, and they should do their due diligence and, and get to the bottom of it. Don't get me wrong. But at the, but at the same time, you know, you have uh, dead Americans in Benghazi. You have the IRS who has targeted, uh, you know, conservative groups. You've had uh, this NSA scandal, you know, uh, the government spying on reporters, uh, you know, James Rosen of, of Fox News. That, uh, you know, just one scandal after another, uh, you know, uh, tampering with uh, unemployment numbers right before the election. Uh, you, there's just so many things, and the media tries to downplay all of those. But, you know, it's uh, you know, a couple of lane closings in New Jersey, and, you know, all of a sudden that, uh, you know, trumps everything else we're talking about. So... You know, I, I think that tells you where the mainstream media is in today's day and age. John Buckley, the ninth ward alderman in Hornell and Hornell Republican leader, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Brian. Been uh, an exciting few days. Thank you, John. NBC is next. Kevin Doran back in town for Phoenix. He'll either return Tuesday or Wednesday to the Newsmaker Show here on AM 1480 WLEA Hornell.